guys, what's up? I wanted to make a little video showing you all the mods that we've done to the Honda Rebel. Right now I'm on a like 2,500 mile road trip from Georgia up to the Upper Peninsula of Mich Michigan and then back down. Um, so current mileage, 9,842. So this is kind of my 10,000 mile update on the bike. Not a review, I might do that later, but um, just the things I've done to it. So let's get started with, I'm still running my front stock wheel at 10,000 miles. It's looking pretty good. Still a bunch of tread, no dry rod or anything. Still on the same front brake. Moving up to the bars is where a lot of things have changed. So I got this, I guess a cowling, it's like almost a windshield from eBay. There's a few eBay items on here that I don't have a, a, a brand name for them, but I'll link where I got them from. So I think this was like 140 bucks and it's made to mount on the stock handlebars, but ended up getting these bars right before I got the windshield. So had to have it custom mounted. And so it's just, it's rusty, but it's just welded right there. And same on the other side and then welded underneath. So it has four little points of contact. And it's actually very sturdy. This has a little wiggle to it, but it's just screwed in by some washers some rubber or some rubber grommets or something and that's been fine it the buffeting is better it doesn't push your chest back as much but it wobbles your head around so it's not really not sure which one's better the having your chest pushed back or your head wobbled around more the bars these are from uh, I think it's called zombie performance zombie something they're out in Oregon um, and he custom makes bars. He has a bunch of different models that he makes them for. And he was pretty good with, I, I paid full price for all this stuff. Um, none of it's sponsored things. Actually, that's not true. We'll get to that. But these bars paid for them. I saw some videos of, of uh, some of these rabbit ear bars that are nice and narrow. And I said, this is exactly what I want. He made them, but he wasn't sure if the new Rebels would fit. So I ended up taking apart everything from the stock and measuring them and, and giving him measurements and all his 100 millimeter Honda Shadow bars should work for these. So these are just riserless. They don't have the clip with the stock bars that comes up and then clamps on like a bicycle. They don't have that, it just goes through. And they provided bolts as well on the underside. You can't really see them, but it's just bolted down and you use the stock uh, rubber grommets that are down in there as well and it's just bolts to the frame bolts that uh triple tree and work pretty well as far as stock wiring so you can do it with stock wiring you can you can run some of these rabbit ears this everything has to be kind of rerun through the outside like you can see the throttle cables just go around and into there rather than up the bars around and down in because they're too short so i could redo these that wouldn't be too hard but i've had no issues with that the electrical is all just straight up and zip tied on um, and that works this electrical is a little bit tighter it goes straight down like everything could be cleaned up but it works so the things that didn't work the throttle cable it worked with the stock throttle cable and i actually have it on vacation in case this one got damaged uh but what i had to do was run it straight from this hole up through the inside uh, behind the bars or i think i ran it through right here through there and then just really sharply bent to here because it, it couldn't stretch around to go down in the normal spot um so i ordered a new one that was four inches longer, I think, and now it, it it flows perfectly. The other bad thing about it though was it was all the way, I guess loosened, whatever you call it, so that when you went past half throttle, the clutch slipped, um, and it was fine. I mean, these clutches are supposed to be able to slip, and I did like 900 miles on it with the clutch slipping like that, um, and just sped up slowly. Nothing bad happened to it, and that, that was like 1,300 miles ago, so 
that I changed this out. This one works good. I'll put a link to this one as well. It has kind of a sharp bend down here. It's made for this specific bike this year and a Rebel, but it's kind of, it could be better. Like I had to really lube this up because it kind of grabs a little bit going around this bend, but it, it works. The weird thing is these front brake. This is something that does not work at all because it's the stock bars, it's just right here. So the brake is super short. So I need to get a new brake line made that I can run all the way up and mount it right here and actually be able to hit the front brake. Um, it hasn't been an issue. I've done a lot of miles with it like this. If I really need to stop, I just reach up like this and pull it down. But mostly I engine brake and then I foot brake when I'm close. Um, and this has ABS, so the back wheel's not really gonna slide out if I brake kind of hard. But it's more pay attention to things coming up in front of you, slow down, that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, there's a the front brake. It's better having this front brake here than not having it at all. Sometimes I would hit this with my arm though and shut the bike off. I have to pull the clutch back in, turn it on, start it, and then keep going. So it's got its challenges. Then uh, this thing was sent to me, this quad lock thing. I emailed them and said, I have a YouTube channel and they nailed me this. But I actually love this thing because before I had to, going from being in the car and uh, having to just memorize everything beforehand on the bike because I had no way to look or pull over and stop and look up directions. Now I can mount this right here and it kind of sits at a slant like this so I can get my maps, I can get my music, I can plug in an actual headphones um, and did that like the whole trip up here. Just have my phone here, the music on, and then it was easy to, if you're like riding through a city, it's easy to pop on maps and, and get your directions instead of stopping, getting out of, out of your pocket. And then they also gave me one for my car, so I have the case on my phone, and I can just mount it in both spots. So these things are actually cool. They're not cheap, though, but I got it for free. Uh, last bit on the bars. The, all these stock electrical stuff, controls, I guess, are mounted on these bars. The, the, the Rebel, I didn't say this in the other part, the Rebel bars are one inch from the center to the outside. The whole thing's one inch, where old Rebels didn't used to be that way they like changed width and some shadows did that so there's a lot of stuff online that's talking about how they're confused about what's what i can confirm that it's, the stock bars are one inch at the handles one inch at the whatever where it mounts right here so the one inch controls work now you can see there's a gap there and there's no grip here there is a little thing a little notch of metal that sticks out that has to have a hole drilled in the bars and that will clip into place almost so that this can't twist at all and then it will be able to tighten all the way down i haven't done that on either one but i mean it's not an issue it's rained in there and nothing bad happened so we'll probably leave it like this for a while maybe i'll fix it one day the mirrors these are the stock mirrors but i bought that little kit that everybody has to flip your mirrors on the stock bars and now they just work on here because they're one inch clamps and that's all the bars the front brake's not attached to the light so i don't have a light on the front brake oh and then the speedometer usually mounts here on rebels ended up having to get this relocation bracket thing that i've seen quite a bit of videos on it's it's fine um that was that was my real really my only option to do that because the first while when I put these bars on, I just had to zip tie it right here and it didn't really work. I couldn't see it or see what gear I was in, see what speed I was going, all that kind of stuff for quite a while until I got the bracket, then it's relocated and that's fine. So everything down low is pretty much the same. Let's move on to the seat. A lot of people ask about the seat because it's kind of like those Harley Saddleman's style. But it's some person out of Taiwan and it just says Rebel on it and has stitching. This seat is like mediocre. It's, it leans back and it's comfortable um, to a degree, but stock seat is very similar in comfort. When I first got it, you can hear it now. <laughs> it's, it's not really like, it's made the same style, but the bracket that mounts underneath, it kind of like clips in and bolts down. 
it's it's horribly made they like figured out something that could fit and didn't like improve it at all but it was like 230 bucks from taiwan and it does fine gives me room for a second person and then my dry bag that i took on this tour goes here mounted to my sissy bar and it gives me a backrest to lean on so with the new bars i can just lean back lay back on the bag and hold on and it's a lot less painful on long trips um but yeah that's the seat it bolts on to the same spot you would mount like a little rack then moving on from the seat we have my sissy bar that my sister made for me uh she welded this up it mounts to these little brackets here and on the other side there's some washers in there i have a whole video on this um it goes up to about here and having this is super nice for trips because otherwise i'd have backpack on or strap down and yeah this it makes it a lot better and then we've got my gas tank that i this was my 2016 bike touring water bottle that mounted to my bicycle and just use it for extra fuel this this bike has a couple hundred miles of range but it's like you can go for like two hours um two and a half hours on the interstates before you have to fill up so i didn't want to get into a spot where i pass something especially up here in michigan where it might be 30 miles and i miss something or realize i need gas so i've got like an extra 30 40 miles of range in this bottle um this thing has been getting 55 ish miles to the gallon on the interstate on this trip going up by 75 going like 70 70 miles an hour um so yeah got the extra gas tank and then we've had this tool roll i just have it on here now because i just uh cleaned and adjusted the chain and all that because it was super loose because i just did 2,000 miles without cleaning it and yeah that's the bike oh and then in the back it's got lube all over it but uh we got some Shinko something tires. Had to pick these up. Um, back tire had to be replaced at around 8,000 miles because it had no tread left. And I was getting ready to go on this trip. Yeah, that's all I got for now. Um, I like the way this bike rides. I like the way it tours. It does well on highways. Not great, but it does well. Um, I can see myself eventually wanting to get into something bigger, but for now it's paid for and it gets good fuel mileage. So we'll keep running it, and uh, I'm sure a bunch of you guys will have questions about the bars or measurements on it, or I don't know, just leave them below. Maybe I'll answer them, maybe I won't. I'll probably do like a 10,000 mile review or 12,000 mile review in a bit. Just some stuff that happened with the bike that was like, whatever. Um, but yeah, I could share that, maybe. But yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.